Hey makers, so I had an aha moment and I figured out another way to make a large name sign. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is my beautiful chaos here. I'm prepping wood for future projects and just finished painting this and I'm gonna be cutting it for a nursery name sign. So I'll show you how I do that. I pre-paint because in the beginning I didn't and I painted after and it was such a pain to get things nice and clean and beautiful. I find that if I pre-paint, it's gonna come out spotless. So let's, let's get to it. Okay, so by the time I was ready to make my cut, the wood had bowed even more because I took forever and that's just not gonna work because then the laser's not gonna cut through. Okay, so I'm first gonna cut the biggest part of the name just because that's how I felt like doing it. <laughs> and you see, I flipped it over because I can save the bottom half if I position it this way. So first I'm gonna convert the font to a path so that it turns into an image and it's no longer a font. And then I can move the dot of the eye and save even more room on the bottom. And because the wood is so bowed, now I'm gonna pick a few spots where I need to, you know, get that wood to be pinned down and I'm gonna cut around um, my word. So I'm gonna put maybe, so I'm gonna put maybe a little square right there and that looks good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna select the two little squares, okay? So I'm gonna select them, I'm gonna hold shift down so I can select two things at the same time and then I'm gonna click the option that says cut selected items or objects right there. And then I'm gonna hit send and we are gonna pin that baby down. All right, so we gotta communicate with the laser. I'm gonna hit file, find my file, right there it is, enter. Okay, and now I'm going to select the origin that I want this to start from. So the origin is where the laser is gonna begin my job. So once I set it there, I'm not gonna move it anymore. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna to touch origin. Now I'm gonna frame it so I can see where it's gonna cut, make sure that it's gonna go where I want it to. Right now I'm guessing, cause you know, I, I haven't cut anything on it yet. Close the lid and let's get ready to make our cut. Oh man, look how bad that was. I mean, they should not fall down that much. The wood really needs to be flush with the tray if we're gonna have a successful cut. So I'm gonna pick those up and use painter's tape because it's just a lot easier as you can see. And um, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my pins in. These pins are a lifesaver. You totally need to get them. I resize them for my Mira um, if you're gonna be working with wood. So I'm gonna squish it down into the honeycomb tray. It's gonna help hold it down. I know my video is just amazing, isn't it? Look at that. Fabulous video skills over here. All right, good. Now I'm gonna put another one over here. Bam, we are ready to go. Actually, nope, the bottom is still kind of bowed, so I'm gonna cut another hole right there. All right, so I've, I've made my extra cut. I'm ready to do the job. Now I wanna see how long it's gonna take, so I'm gonna select the job, and I'm gonna go down to where it says work time preview, and I'm gonna let it calculate how long or estimate how long this cut is. So it's gonna be approximately 10 minutes to cut 20 centimeter inches wide for this word. All right, so let's get ready. Okay, so I cut the whole thing and then I realized I forgot to frame my job in the beginning and you always wanna frame your job because you wanna make sure that whatever you're cutting falls within the frame of your material and I just wasn't paying attention. So thankfully, remember I, put, I positioned this up at the top of the wood so that I could save the bottom half? Well, now I, I don't have to go and repaint a whole other piece. At least I can reposition it and uh, cut again. It's also a good thing that I haven't moved any of the little squares that I used to put the pins in because now I can flip the word and work around what's already been cut on the wood. So see, I flipped it, but now I have to position it up just a little bit so it's not touching. Um, it doesn't go through the cut that I already made. All right guys, so I have, I have cut my entire word out and you can see it's still masked because I want to keep it as clean as I can until I'm done working with it. This is what the back of it looks like if you don't mask. This is called backlash. And that's um, just from, you know, the laser beam underneath. 
And I didn't mask it because <laughs> I don't want to waste masking and I can easily just sand this off. So this is what it, I use my orbital sander very gently because I don't want to crack or destroy the piece. Um, and I always lay it on top of a towel so I don't scratch it. But anyhow, you can see the difference. This is what it looks like if it's sanded. It's got a clean back. And even though nobody's going to see it, it's just the kind of, I don't want to give that to a customer. I don't think it looks good. So I'm going to sand that off and then I will peel off my masking and make sure that I don't need to make any touch-ups. So what I've done now is I used a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just an old t-shirt rag to wipe down any areas that had a little more soot than I would have liked. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and peel up my masking and take a look and see if I need to touch up anything. <laughs> So she looks great, just peeled off the masking, but there are just a few spots where, let me see if I can find one here with my camera on it, um, where there's a little bit of like burn mark from the, um, from the laser. Okay, so like right there, not a lot, just a little bit. So I'm gonna take my rubbing alcohol and just a little, um, you know, old t-shirt. I love working with old t-shirts and that's just gonna come right off. So I'll do that in any of the spots that I feel, oh, see, this one's much more noticeable. Sorry, this is all hard to do with one hand. And it should just come out off. Done. Okay. Sorry, I have one hand here. But you get the idea. And then I'll clean it up and I'll be done. Sold. Guys, so it's done. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. You know, if you've seen my tutorial on um, <laughs> how to make like a really long name sign and how I like glued everything together and pieced it all together, I can't believe I didn't think, well, let me just separate the initial and then I could still make a long name. Whatever. So here's what it looks like finished. So here it is. It looks beautiful. And <laughs> I just can't believe it. So this is this is 42, okay? So just by using my mirror, okay, I cut that out to 27, and then this made up the difference. It's roughly 42, which is the same size of the first name sign I ever made, the Charlotte one with the tutorial of how to piece it together if your laser's not big enough. I can't believe I, I didn't think of this the first time, but you know, everything happens for a reason. I know that that tutorial has been very helpful for people but I am now gonna be doing it this way because it's just less time consuming. Okay, so I hope you guys are mind blown too. And uh, I'll see you guys here next time on That Mom with a Laser. I hope this was helpful. Please follow and comment and go make something awesome. See you later, maker.